now time for our campaign countdown review, our weekly look at the state of the election campaign so far and what's coming up this week. Tax rows have dominated the past two weeks, but today the parties are looking to move on. David Cameron has been speaking this morning, making an appeal to elderly voters, and Ed Miliband is focusing on the arts. But, as ever, there have been a few events as well. Let's uh, talk about the state of the campaign so far and what's coming up with uh, Emily Ashton, uh, Senior Political Correspondent at BuzzFeed UK, and Kate Devlin, the Herald's Westminster Correspondent. Thanks both for coming in. Okay. Um, so I guess the best way to start is take a, a look at the polls and just see um, what they are showing us right now. The, uh, Latest, there they are, right behind me. <laughs> okay, so the poll of polls, Labour up the top, 34%, Conservatives 33%, UKIP 14%, Liberal Democrats 8%, Greens 6%, and others 6%. Also, that's the BBC poll of polls over the last six months. And actually, not much has shifted. Not much has shifted. Um, you've got Labour and Conservative on around third, a third of voters opting for both those major parties. It's not a ringing endorsement, is it? <laughs> you know, this, is, this is why we're seeing this rise of the smaller parties, because pe people just generally just aren't that convinced by either of the top two parties anymore. As you can see, you know, a third of the vote is not exactly where they'd want to be at the moment. But yeah, they keep shifting, and Labour is in the lead at the moment. Uh, and Kate, when we look at those statistics, I mean, obviously, you're, you're from the Herald. What, what isn't sort of clear from those is the position of the SNP and there, there is this rise of the smaller parties everywhere but, but potentially it's the SNP that's going to be uh, very interesting in Westminster come the election. Absolutely, and everybody's looking at how many seats that they'll take from Labour. There was an interesting poll last week that suggested maybe Labour was breaking ahead of the pact and they might just have enough that actually they could still win uh, even if they lost uh, a great, great swathe of seats in Scotland. Mm -hmm. But of course, then there was another poll that suggested maybe the Conservatives were breaking ahead of the pack. And so what we've seen really this week, um, as you said, as in the past six months, is that nobody's out there winning it yet. In fact, it's kind of as if, you know, who's losing it the least. And I do wonder if we're starting to enter uh, events territory but the parties will be at the mercy of events that happen. As you say, they're all out like, giving speeches this morning, but the main story that dominates is a story about one Conservative MP and one Labour MP mm -hmm. that will do nothing probably to, to shake people's opinions out there, that they're kind of all the same. And that's actually bad for both the main parties and good for the small parties. I mean, one of the potential game changers is if these debates actually go ahead because they did shake things up at the last election. Let's just... Uh, catch up with the latest developments on the debates. It's still not certain they're going to go ahead, but the major broadcasters have this morning announced their proposals for the order of the TV debates if they, if they do go ahead. And after drawing lots, they're proposing an ITV debate between the leaders of seven parties on the 2nd of April. That's Labour, the Conservatives, the Lib Dems, UKIP, the Greens, the SNP and Plaid Cymru. Uh, the proposal is for a BBC debate on the 16th of April between the same seven parties and then a head-to-head -head between David Cameron and Ed Miliband on the 30th of April broadcast on Sky News and Channel 4, but, as I say, may not go ahead. It's only provisional, isn't it, at yeah. the moment, even though these dates have been announced, because, actually, David Cameron isn't even sure whether he wants to take part yet, um, and he, there's various reasons he was setting out for not really wanting to take part in debates, but one of them is now that he wasn't too keen on it being during the short campaign, so when Parliament's resolved on March the 30th, then we have this short election campaign. He didn't really want the debates to, to kind of take over that period. He wanted a proper election campaign to go out around the country. Mm. He didn't want it all focused on TV debates. So until we know whether he's going for it, we don't know whether these are going to be kind of proper head-to-head -head debates yet. Uh, and Kate, it's, it's the, uh, Nick Clegg in the centre there, um, who's actually now the one who's, who's sort of almost the, the, the most unhappy. Lots of people are unhappy about these. The DUP is still threatening legal action over them. Indeed. But um, Nick Clegg, who did perform well in those debates last time, did see a boost in his fortunes as a result, is, yes. is very annoyed that he won't be in that last debate, which will be a head-to-head -head, uh, as proposed. Well, between absolutely. The... And it does look as if uh, how the cookie has crumbled on this one, how the debates have come out because of that FA style draw that the broadcasters did. And with this kind of final being the head-to-head -head between David Cameron and Ed Miliband, which would probably have the most viewers as well, does probably make it less likely that it will happen because obviously that excludes Nick Clegg, who, who is, is more uh, unhappy with these debates as time goes on. It would probably have benefits uh, for, um, for David Cameron and for Ed Miliband because it would help to concentrate. It's one week before voters go to the polls. Mm. 
it would help to concentrate people's minds on what both party leaders are trying to say, which is this is a debate about who gets into Downing Street. This is between me and him, effectively. But it's so high risk mm. that there are lots of people uh, in, in both parties.